Hello and welcome to another episode of Totally Tech Tom. In this episode we're going to be reviewing a text editor for the iPad called Code Editor by Panic. This is a perfect companion if you're a developer or a DevOps engineer that's out on the go and only wants to take their iPad out with them. Uh, this is a direct follow-on from my previous video which is the review of the Logitech Slim Folio keyboard and case which in my opinion was a great alternative to the iPad Pro keyboard. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a review of a free alternative text editor. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Okay, let's crack on and have a look at Code Editor. Okay, so on the iPad now, um, what I will do is we'll, we'll go straight into the app. So we've got Code Editor here. And we'll just open that up. Um, well, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a folder or a site, as it's called, where you can put your project into. So what this actually lets you do is you can create a group. Uh, so it just depends how you want to actually structure, you structure your work. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of a nice little feature, I think. Uh, so we'll just have, I don't know, WordPress, just to make it easy. Uh, and then let's just do a new site by pressing the little plus arrow, plus icon in the top right. Uh, and let's just call this Sandbox FTP. Uh, it's just some FTP server, it doesn't actually do anything. But in, in your case, it could be an actual website and you're uploading your documents to the server and will be applied or deployed straight away. Uh, so we'll go to the little world in the middle, uh, if you saw where I actually pressed then. Uh, and we can give it, put the IP address in. Now, you would probably want to have DNS set up here at this point, but I'm just giving you a review of the actual software here. I'm not really that bothered. Uh, username is myself, Tom. And password. Don't judge if you saw that. iPads aren't very good at hiding passwords. And that's it. Uh, it also gives you terminal access, but we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, so let's just click done. So there it is, Sandbox FTP. So let's open that. The first thing you'll see is the on the left-hand side, you've got your local directory structure, and on the right-hand side is the remote FTP server's directory structure, uh, which is a nice way of laying it out and making it simple for you to... Um, an interface with that. Something that I forgot to review about the keyboard is I can do Alt Tab or Command Tab. So let's go over into Safari and grab WordPress. There it is. Uh, more. I was playing around with Coda the other day, so so we'll import it to Code Editor. Boom, there it is. So we've just added the .zip file of WordPress into our local directory structure. And if we just select that and scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice we've got decompress. So boom, and as you can see now, that along the bottom is decompressing all them files. So that's brilliant. <laughs> Although it only works with .zip. You'd think it would work with tar files, but doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, right, just wait for that to finish. Okay, done. Uh, to go back, there isn't an actual back button. You've got to press the, the the lines in the top left. You see where the documents just pop down, and you can press documents. That takes you back. Well, it actually gives you a list of directories that are higher up in hierarch hierarch hierarchical order. Uh, so what we're going to do now, uh, obviously you're not going to be happy with the WordPress name as it stands so we can um, we can press the little tick icon on the top right of the local pane um, and if we just press the I that takes us into the uh, properties and then you just press on the word of the name of the folder and then you can just change it so our site or let's call it my site just call it my site actually I don't like that Personally, I'd prefer, when I'm dealing with web servers, I'd rather just name my files like variables. 
uh, or folders like variables. But that's just my personal preference. Right, so we can rename stuff. We can extract .zip files in the local directory. Uh, what else can we do? We can just move back up to that root. We can also merge folders across to the remote server as well. I can now drag and drop. So you press and hold it, drag it, and then just drop. And what that'll do now is it'll move those, merge those files across onto the ser onto the remote server. We now have it, this on the remote side, so you can have a look. Let's have open that up. Um, I'm gonna just you can use these buttons at the bottom here to toggle whether you're looking at both local and remote or just remote. And probably at this point you're just interested in the remote files. So one of the great features about this software is it has the um, the syntax highlighting. So if I just open the random file, open WP load, we can edit in code editor, and then here it is. So now we have the WP load file open, and then you can just edit like you would normally edit. So like if something, uh, do something. I don't know. I'm not a PHP writer to be honest. Also allows you to have tabs. So if we want to edit another file, such as WP Cron, edit in code editor, we can. So there you have the other file. So one of the other features that is offered uh, is we can go into a terminal. Ta-da! So now we are actually on that host, the FTP server, providing you've got terminal access, obviously. Um, we can go in and we can see that my site is in there. We can look at all the files. We can edit files from there if we want to. The, uh, the actual terminal itself, if you, uh, you can use tab complete, as you can see. My site, yep. Yeah. So that's great, handy if you've got your keyboard. You've got your escape key in the bottom left, so as the home button has been re has replaced the escape key on the keyboard, you can actually just hit the escape key there if you need to. I'm just gonna exit. Oh, now it is. So one other thing I wanted to mention um, is you can preview your code, which gives you a little browser. Uh, so, for example, we can go to totallytechtom.co.uk and it will render that page. So, woohoo, there you go. It does HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just had a look online just to get an idea of what that feature is capable of doing. It does say that stuff like PHP, Ruby, and Swift, etc., rendering of those programming languages at the minute is not supported. So it's possibility that maybe it will do it in the future. But for now, uh, if you are just coding static pages, then that might be perfect for you. Okay, so there was another application I wanted to give you a review of. Uh, essentially, this is a similar product, uh, does the same sort of things. Uh, it's free from the App Store, um, so it's a nice little alternative if you're not willing to part with the 23 quid that Code Editor costs. I'll just drop back down. So it's called Coda. It also offers a local storage and a remote FTP, SFTP, SCP, that kind of thing. So I think I've already set that up. Uh, before making this video, yeah. Uh, but if we go to pri uh, public HTML, we can see my site that we created before that we did in Code Editor. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. If we have a look at index, we can see that it's syntax highlighted, so it's it's recommend it's recognizing that it's .php. 
Now we can edit um, if something, and again, it did add the parenthesis in for me, but it didn't do that nice little feature, which is adding the tab in and putting you into that coding space. The other thing, which could be a bug, or it could just be that I'm using an old iOS, when I start typing, it seems to be working now. Yeah, there you go. There's a black space now where the keyboard should show, but because we're using a keyboard, uh, an actual physical keyboard, the and the on-screen keyboard isn't showing anymore. It's just leaving a black space. But for free, it's a really nice alternative. This does have a terminal editor on it as well, but it doesn't look as pretty as code editor. Um, tab complete doesn't work. There's some strange things. Um, CD. It's a bit. It's a bit on the slow side. Oh yeah, public. It does work, uh, it's just not as terminally as you might be used to. So that's Coda, the free alternative. So, in summary, Code Editor is a great text editing tool if you're considering using your iPad for development or DevOps type roles. The use of SCP for file management and the terminal editor I find works well if you want to use a remote server as your development PC. In this case you would probably want to have a VPN uh, to keep your connection private while you're doing your development. However there was a few things that I didn't like about it. In particular it was the file management I found was a bit awkward. Say you had a colleague make a change to the file in the project and then you did a recursive merge back to your local device it would actually cause code editor to fail uh, and it would be a hard fail and would stop the merge um, in those instances you could probably have your own personal FTP server for each developer and then use co uh, version control mechanisms to manage the files out to production servers um, Overall, if you're willing to pay £23.99, I think you'll be very happy with the features that this product has to offer and you'll be able to start using your iPad for more than just browsing the net. Of course, Coda was a very good free alternative. It offered many of the same features that I, f I think makes Code Editor a really good product. However, there's a couple of other things that Code Editor does which is really good, such as the ability to check web static web content and JavaScript content um, using the app and whatever's on your local device, which was pretty cool. And that's all for this episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for more Totally Tech videos from Tom.